Dr. David Weber. I'm a pediatric endocrinologist. I'm the medical director for the Center for Bone Health at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and the Perlman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, so as a pediatric endocrinologist, we care for children with all types of rare bone diseases. And one uh, a disease or one condition that we've we've been of in, have been interested in is uh, ENPP1 deficiency, uh, which underlies generalized arterial calcification of infancy. And we've cared for infants and, and children and young adults affected by this disease. This, this really is a, it's a devastating disease. Uh, so ENPP1 deficiency uh, causes uh, two main different diseases. So the first is generalized arterial calcification of infancy, which we often call GACI. And so this really is a devastating disease where even before birth, uh, infants uh, can develop calcification of the arteries and the organs, and they also get stenosis or narrowing of those blood vessels. And this condition can lead to very serious complications uh, such as heart attacks and hypertension or high blood pressure and, and kidney disease. Uh, in fact, it's such a severe condition that, that almost half of the babies born to this uh, with GACI don't survive beyond the first year of life. Uh, for those that do, they then unfortunately often develop a condition called autosomal recessive hypophosphatemic rickets type 2 or ARHR2. Uh, this is a condition that leads to weak bones, uh, so they develop something called osteomalacia, which is softening of the bones, and then uh, rickets, and this uh, affects things like growth and can cause bone pain and, and lead to other musculoskeletal issues, both in childhood and, and later as adults. Yeah, so I think that that's a great question, and, and really the message we want to get out is it really is a disease you have to really be thinking about. Um, I should have mentioned this is these are extremely rare diseases. So you know the number of of patients affected maybe it's one in a hundred thousand births, so very uncommon. And so anytime there's uh, findings of abnormal calcification or calcium deposits that are seen on a prenatal ultrasound. Um, or in infants, if there's unusual calcification seen in the lungs or the heart or even in the soft tissue and the joints, we need to be thinking about this condition uh, so that we can maybe talk about early treatments and, and, and monitoring for some of these complications. Uh, likewise, uh, for endocrinologists and, and orthopedic surgeons and other doctors who, who care for patients presenting with rickets or with these bone findings due to low phosphorus, we have to remember to think about ENPP1 deficiency because the treatment is actually a little bit different uh, and there's some emerging therapies that are being developed. So it's very important to remember these conditions and then you know, pursue genetic testing for them you know, when they're suspected. So right now there is no approved treatment for either GACI or, or ARHR2. So what we're doing is we're offering supportive care. So for the arterial calcification, uh, we're treating symptoms like the heart disease and the hypertension. So they may be on medications like uh, aspirin or a blood thinner to prevent clots and reduce the chance of, of having a heart attack. They're on medicines to control blood pressure. Um, we have tried using a, a type of a medicine called a bisphosphonate to reduce the calcification or the potential for calcification, but we really aren't sure uh, if that works and it doesn't really target the real problem of, of the disease here. Uh, the patients with ARHR2 or rickets, they're treated with medicines called uh, phosphate and, and calcitriol. These are medicines that uh, these kids have to take three, sometimes four, or even five times a day. Uh, so a high burden on, on the, the children to take this many medicines. And they can lead to some side effects like developing something called nephrocalcinosis, which is calcification of the kidney. Uh, so again, not a great solution to, to treating this condition. Mm -hmm. excited about, about INZ701. So this is an enzyme replacement therapy. Uh, so ENPP1 is an enzyme, uh, and it's uh, responsible for making something called pyrophosphate. And, and pyrophosphate, often abbreviated PPI, is what actually keeps calcium and phosphorus crystals from coming together uh, in the blood. And so patients with ENPP1 deficiency, because they lack PPI, they get all of this abnormal calcification and this narrowing of the arteries. And so uh, with INZ701, really for the first time, you know, we're investigating, you know, giving back this enzyme that is missing. And so theoretically, it's, you know, hopefully will be a big improvement over our current therapies by replacing what's missing. We hope to prevent the calcification, uh, prevent or treat the stenosis, and then 
prevent and treat the rickets as that develops later on in life. Yeah, so here at the, the ASBMR, the, the American Society for Bone Mineral Research uh, meeting, uh, there's a, a number of studies that are really helping to define really the impact of ENPP1 deficiency on children and adults. Uh, so there's uh, studies uh, really helping us understand that it actually is not just those cardiovascular complications, but we're learning more that patients with these conditions can be at risk of, of things like strokes and other neurologic diseases as complications from ENPP1 deficiency, um, as well as another condition called ABCC6 deficiency, which is closely related uh, to ENPP1 deficiency. Um, we're also just really learning more about some of the, we call them extraskeletal manifestations or disease effects beyond just the skeletons. So for instance, hearing loss is quite common. We're learning much more about chronic joint pain and, and back pain due to calcification of ligaments and tendons that really impair quality of life. The clinical trials are ongoing, so there's been some early uh, clinical trials done in adults first that have uh, completed enrollment and they're analyzing data. Some of that information was presented at the ASBMR last year in 2023, uh, showing very promising results of a, of a nice improvement or an increase in those pyrophosphate levels in patients treated with INZ701 enzyme replacement therapy. Uh, currently, there are multiple studies going on in children because this, of course, is a, a childhood or even a prenatal onset condition. We want to start therapy as soon as possible. Uh, so there's uh, currently ongoing trials in infants to make sure this medicine is safe and effective in infants. And then a larger study uh, in children with EMPP1 deficiency looking at its ability to treat and prevent the rickets. I think the the main thing is is just to sort of remember um, the importance of these conditions and to really think about genetic testing. So whenever you know a patient is presenting with abnormal calcification or rickets uh, due to phosphate wasting, we really want to do testing for EMPP1 uh, to make sure we're getting the diagnosis correctly. Mm -hmm.